On this Saturday night, we have liftoff. James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe. NASA's new landmark mission to unearth the secrets of the universe, boldly going where no telescope has gone before. A massacre in military-controlled Myanmar. The murderous attack blamed on government forces. COVID Christmas in Canada, where testing for the virus doesn't take a day off for festivities. It was lined up all the way around the corner there. Global National, reporting tonight, Colleen Christie. Good evening and Merry Christmas. More than 30 years and $10 billion later, the world's largest and most powerful space telescope is in orbit tonight. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope represents a new era in space discovery, and Canada is playing a pivotal part. Eric Sorensen explains how it could revolutionize astronomy and help us better understand the birth of the universe. Decollage liftoff from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. As the James Webb Space Telescope climbed into the sky, scientists were as nervous and excited as any child on Christmas morning. So far so good, everything is nominal. As each rocket stage fell away, Webb was set loose. Separation Webb Space Telescope, go Webb! Cheers went up and images of the Earth receded as the most powerful space telescope ever built began a voyage in search of the birth of the universe. They're a beginning of one of the most amazing uh, missions that humanity has conceived. Webb will replace the Hubble telescope that revealed stars and galaxies never seen before. But there is more to be discovered. For the last 31 years, the Hubble telescope has orbited just overhead about 550 kilometers above the Earth. The Webb telescope is being sent to a point four times further away than the moon. The trek will take about a month and it will end up 1.5 million kilometers away. And there's a reason for that. Webb requires utter darkness and super cold conditions. A solar shield the size of a tennis court will unfold to block the heat of the sun and the light from the sun, the earth, and even the moon. The Webb's mirrors, expanding to six and a half meters across, will capture infrared light emitted eons ago by the first stars. It literally is going to be uh, opening up you know, secrets from the earliest moments of the universe, there's really not going to be any area of astronomy that Webb will not contribute significantly to. We will get closer to the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago. That set off the early formation of the universe, creating the first galaxies, and eventually our solar system and the Earth just four and a half billion years ago. The Webb telescope will look deeper into space than ever before, effectively taking us back to see the light from the first stars and even the darkness before that. Bon voyage, Webb. Canada is a major partner in what is the largest space science project in the 60-year history of the Canadian space program. We're playing a big role in the world stage. Canadian excellence has helped make this flagship telescope a reality. Canadian technology will pinpoint distant galaxies and our scientists will be on the front lines of new discoveries. At least half of the people in Canada who got time uh, to use the James Webb Space Telescope are fairly young and early in their career. And so I think this projects a, a, a very bright future for astronomy in Canada. The Webb Space Telescope begins a new era in space that will expand our understanding of where we came from and how we got here. Eric Sorensen, Global News, Toronto. In the Vancouver area, dreams of a white Christmas came true. Crews are out and about clearing the roads after Santa delivered a rare Christmas Eve snowfall. And more is falling today, up to 15 centimeters in some spots. Temperatures are forecast to stay well below freezing through next week. The last time BC's lower mainland had a white Christmas was back in 2008. As the snow falls on B.C., COVID is surging there. This week, the province shattered its daily new caseload total four days in a row. Testing clinics have been overwhelmed. People even lined up today. But as Kyle Benning reports, there are now limits on who can get tested. It's a rare white Christmas in Vancouver. So the area in front of a brand new COVID-19 testing centre needs to be cleared. It was... Lined up all the way around the corner there and they got everybody in and out in a matter of 15, 20 minutes. The line starting early Christmas morning to get in for a quick test and some peace of mind. Because I have a wife and a child at home and I just want to double check, make sure. 
got a bit of a tickle and a bit of a headache, body ache. Even though many we spoke with said the wait wasn't long today, BC has reached its testing capacity. Only vulnerable people and those displaying COVID symptoms will be PCR tested. Everyone else receives a rapid test. The province's top doctor noting 20,000 tests were done on December 23rd alone, just ahead of the holidays. But this is going to be a Christmas where we have control. We can do things, and part of that means sacrificing again and supporting each other to stay away if we're feeling sick at all. In the last week, Quebec, Ontario and BC have all shattered daily COVID-19 case counts as the Omicron variant becomes the dominant strain across the country. Public health officials continue to ask Canadians to limit contacts to avoid overloading hospitals at the beginning of 2022. Kyle Benning, Global News, Vancouver. The rest of the world is also feeling Omicron tightening its grip. Pandemic protocols are piling up again in many countries. But as Sean O'Shea explains, it's not keeping crowds away. At St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican, Pope Francis celebrated Christmas Eve Mass. Once again, with fewer of the faithful inside and wearing masks, the Pope calling for more dialogue to prevent global wars and to settle family feuds, while also praying for an end to the pandemic and urging vaccine distribution to the poor. Outside in St. Peter's Square, hundreds stood in the rain to see Francis at the central balcony deliver a blessing. I think I'm lucky to get to see this, and especially during COVID. In Bethlehem, Christmas celebrations returned after being cancelled last year with the traditional marching band parade. Palestinian Muslims and Christians gathered in Manger Square. They held midnight mass at the Church of the Nativity, housing the grotto where Jesus was born. In Taiwan, crowds welcomed Christmas in the rain, in a manner more common at New Year's for the countdown. In England, a long-standing tradition, the Royal Christmas Message. Queen Elizabeth has given it every year except one since 1952. While COVID again means we can't celebrate quite as we may have wished, we can still enjoy the many happy traditions. And perhaps a new one, the Duchess of Cambridge playing piano at a Christmas concert, while Britons were urged to get vaccinated over the holidays. There is still a wonderful thing you can give your family and the whole country, and that is to get that jab. In the hope that by next Christmas, the COVID crisis may be in the past. Sean O'Shea, Global News. Queen Elizabeth got very personal in her annual Christmas message this year, honoring who she described as her strength and stay, the late Prince Philip, her husband of 73 years. His sense of service, intellectual curiosity, and capacity to squeeze fun out of any situation were all irrepressible. That mischievous inquiring twinkle was as bright at the end as when I first set eyes on him. But life, of course, consists of final partings as well as first meetings. And as much as I and my family miss him, I know he would want us to enjoy Christmas. Prince Philip died in April at the age of 99. The 95-year-old Queen also said she's looking forward to her Platinum Jubilee next year, marking her 70 years of service. Some sad news tonight. Canadian comedian Candy Palmiter has died. Social media reports she died suddenly today at the age of 53. No cause of death has been released. She was a writer, broadcaster, member of the Mi'kmaq Nation, and was the president of the Dalhousie Aboriginal Law Students Association. A Christmas Eve massacre in Myanmar. Coming up, what at least one human rights group calls a crime against humanity. A gruesome story is emerging out of Myanmar tonight. Reports say the country's military rulers shot and killed more than 30 people, then torched the bodies. Photos show a truck burning with pollution. A gruesome story is emerging out of Myanmar tonight. Reports say the country's military rulers shot and killed more than 30 people, then torched the bodies. Photos show a truck burning with plumes of black smoke in the air. The victims are said to include women, children and the elderly, all trying to escape fighting in the region. According to state media, government troops called the victims terrorists with weapons from the opposition armed forces. The military seized control of Myanmar in February. Thank <laughs> you.
Next, a global national tradition, our salute to our staff. And tonight's Your Canada is Montreal. We'll be right back. Time for a global national tradition, our tribute to the small but mighty villages who produce this newscast, the West Block and the new reality. There are a lot of people working around the clock you never see, and sometimes their pets keep them company. Thank you for trusting us to bring you the news. On behalf of Donna and everyone here at Global, we want to wish you and your families a very safe and happy Christmas. Make the most of what you can during these tough times. I'm Colleen Christie. I'll see you right here tomorrow. Good night.
<clears throat> I said I wasn't gonna cry. <laughs> you guys, you really did this? 